Hey folks, so a lot of people want to know how I do the isometric videos for Team Fortress 2. So today I'm going to do just a little tutorial. First off, if you haven't enabled it already, go into Options, Advance, Enable Developer Console. I've already done this, but you might have to tick this. By default, the Developer Console is enabled by pushing the tilde key. That's the little squiggly boy in the top left corner of your keyboard. All right, this looks a bit scary if you haven't used it before, but once you get used to it, it isn't. It's actually a much quicker way to do some stuff in Team Fortress 2. First off, you want to enter in these commands. Most importantly, SV cheats. This allows us to use some commands we can't use on public servers. So I'm just going to enter in the rest of the commands now, I'll speed this bit up. Just set everything to like. 999999. Bit excessive, but it doesn't matter unless your PC is really bad. I'll leave all these in the comments below as well, so you can just kind of copy and paste them if you want. There are some optional ones you can enter in as well. So, for example, max players 32 will last to have 32 bots at one time rather than just the default 24. Yeah, it's just started raining, so hopefully you can't hear the rain in the background. Alright, so after you enter all those commands, Enter in map, then pick a map. You see a list of every map you have saved on your computer. Now I've got quite a few maps on here. So, um, hmm, what's one I should use? You know what, since I'm interested in those uh, capture the flag commands, let's pick a capture the flag map. So it's a good idea to sort by game mode, so I'll enter CTF, capture the flag, and it'll bring up a list of every single capture the flag map. Let's go. Oh yeah, I was gonna make a version of Double Cross that was long but didn't work out. I'm surprised I still got that on my computer. It's not good, trust me. We're not looking at it. Hmm, how about we go? Let's just go turbine. I actually tried turbine before, it didn't look as good as I hoped it would, but I'll just show it here anyway. So it will take a while for the map to load, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so once the map loads, go to your team selection and select spectate. Push the spacebar till you enter free roam mode. You might need to press it three or four times. And then you can just move around like you know clipping. Here's the fun part. Pick a position that kind of looks into the map but also is on like a 35 degree angle looking down. Also on a 40, basically you want to be looking on the diagonal. The best way to put it is all Team Fortress 2 maps are made on a grid. So you've got like horizontal and vertical lines. They're pretty easy to notice because most mappers will map along them. And you want to be diagonal to those lines. So this is why a turbine's a good one to look because it's pretty easy to see where the diagonals are. And the phone started ringing, hang on. That looks pretty good. Oh, and before I forget, you want to enter in CL Draw HUD 0. And that gets rid of the bars if you're like a peasant like me and use the default HUD. Also just gets rid of any HUD elements. I have this bound to a key actually which I use for the weird map videos. Now here comes the fun part. Enter in CAM ORFO. And whoa what's going on here? Well we need to set the height and the width of the CAM ORFO basically. To do that you go C or for height. So let's go just 1080 for now. And C or for width. So let's go 1920. Good old HD resolution. And yep, this is starting to look like a bit of an isometric map. But we're not quite there yet. As you can see, because Turbine's a bit of a small map, it doesn't look that good. We have to move backwards and forwards. So you notice when I move forward, I'm actually not moving forward, it's just visually what I see moves forward. And if I move backwards, I go out of the map. You tend to not want to guard the map too much when you record isometric views. Oh, something else to mention. Now that you put in cam orpho, you're always going to have cam orpho until you restart your game. So if you like join a casual server after doing this, you'll be stuck with cam orpho. There is a way around this though. If you put it in third person, you'll go back to a perspective view, which is useful if you need to position your camera. 
By the way, I have third person cam off with bounty keys as well. Let's get back at that angle. Let's just leave it like this for now. That's pretty good. But we want it to be a bit more accurate. So go back to console, type in get pause. This will give us our position and our angle. And it'll give us in a format that lets us put it back into console. So copy it, paste it. No, that's not what I want. Copy. Paste. And you want to play around with these values here. So our isometric angle is 35 degrees roughly. I mean, it's like 35.624 or something technically, but 35 is close enough. I'm um, just a little bit though. I accidentally did all my isometric views in 30 degrees looking down, which makes them diametric rather than isometric, but you didn't hear that from me. Also make sure you're on a diagonally right angle. I mean, just on a diagonal angle. So I'm going to round this down to 130, negative 135 degrees. Let's get rid of that taggy bit there. Push and enter. Hey presto, you have an isometric view. Might have to play around the camera a bit. I also encourage you to copy this down so you don't lose it. So I've got a text document open, I'll just paste it in there. Now when I need to move around, I can switch to third person, move to a position, paste the angle in, Switch back to cam ortho, and it's all good. So now here comes the next part, filming bots. For Team Fortress 2 bots to work, they need two things. Be on a compatible game mode, and to have a nav uh, pardon me. A navigation mesh. So, capture the flag is a compatible game mode. I wouldn't be able to tell you what all the compatible game modes are off the top of my head. And I've already generated a nav mesh for this level, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Go back to console, type in nav generate, and it will generate a nav mesh. This will take a while, so I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Remember to turn back on. What was it see old draw hut if you left it on? Off, I mean. Go back into spectate, go into free room. Hopefully you copy paste the where you wanted your position to be. Paste that into console. Hey presto. Got our view back. So now, now that we have a navigation mesh, we can add bots to the game. So let's enter in TF bot add and enter in the number of bots you want to add afterwards. So let's say I've set it to 32, but I want to make it a bit fair and I'm in the game. So you will use up a player slot. And enter it 30. So 30 bots will join the game. We can go back and check. Scoreboard. We're all got the bet. There's all there's a lot of bots basically. Now start running around. Yeah, just play around a bit. As I said, Turbine isn't that good to look at, unfortunately. Bit buggy-ish. If you want to capture more area in your video, you're going to have to play around your C offer width and C offer height a bit. For that, you can use what are like a ratio calculator, this one here. I'll leave this in the comments. Obviously, if we're using a 16 by 9 ratio, you might use something different. But just remember, 16 is long ways along your view, and 9 is like tall ways, I guess you could say. Normally, we use 1080, but if we double that to 12, 2160, push calculate, will tell us how much long we need to put in. So if we go back to the map, go C ortho height, put in 1216. It'll be stretchy, but if we go back to here and go copy, Put that in a C ortho width. Now covering more areas of turbine. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do like a tilt shift effect. 
You can do a more fancy version of this in After Effects, but I tried rendering that version on my PC and it's going to take like 19 hours versus 3 hours. So I'm just going to show you the way I do it because better for my PC, I guess. Um, let's just call this the um, ISO thing. Navigate to wherever you save your footage. So this is where I save mine. This was the raw footage from the Double Cross video, and this is raw footage from a video that I did of Well X51. Just drop it in your Premiere Pro program. While we go on, I'm just gonna cover up these areas here because you can see the back of the things. Now, when you want to put the blur in, go Effects, Video Effects, Camera Blur. You can use, uh, what is it? Compound Blur, which has a few more options and looks a little better in my opinion, but it takes longer to render, at least on my kind of out of date computer. So, first you need a set a mask. You need this, so this little pen here. Just kind of mask out the center so it's an area of focus. That's a bit rough, but it'll do. Then you invert it. Then you add a Decrease the blur. I'd like to put it on three. Actually, let's make it two. That's a bit better. And just feather it out a bit. Fair bit. You don't want to feather it too much, but you don't want to be too lenient on the feather either. You can also put some color correction to improve the effect. So, what is it? Lumini tree color. Lum let me tree. This one. Just put this one on. Slap it on. Play around the effects bit. Don't go over the top of it. It looks a bit silly. Yeah, that'll do. That's not overdoing it too much. Yeah, so let's just see how this little section works out. So you can use mark in and mark out just to make a little test section rather than render like a whole hour of long video. Or media doo -doo -doo -doo. export. Okay, so the end result should look something like this. So this I was probably a bit too blurry, I might need to play around a bit more with the feathering. But you get the basic idea. So yeah, that's that's how you do isometric tier 2 map videos. Thanks, and hopefully this doesn't come a fat everyone gets annoyed with 